Hey, it go. I'm go. Well, the the mania transport. So, uh, we're heading to Myanmar and uh, the G-Boys explain what they're up to. And they're not after the destruction of the Federation as such. I mean, it took a lot of trouble to get the Earth Sphere, like, united anyway, right? But uh, it's not like uh, all One World Governments are bad. The Frontier Fleet is from a dimension where that worked out fine. But in their case, it's humanity only united because otherwise they were going to go extinct. But, you, you know, the principle's there. Big threats mean big cooperation, and it's hard to find a bigger threat than Gaio. The trouble with the whole Imperium thing is it forced the people together too quickly. So, there's a federation with more than a few kinks in it. Uh, too much power is concentrated in the big three, and uh, a lot of the second class nature, n nations, such as the colonies, uh, remains li uh, like little changed. Uh, there's enough in uh, inequity going around that the identifiable third class tier exists, which are nations crippled by internal fighting under the supervision of the UN. Uh, any reasonable voices from the, the colony side were silenced by uh, Pref when Professor, uh, Professor Ambassador Dorian uh, was assassinated, which have left hardliners on both sides to point fingers at each other, where the colony people were like, the Federation framed us, and the Federation like, they killed the guy! But uh, Jewers of the opinion that the Earth Federation people were responsible, and he fears that uh, Rolina would only withdraw further if she knew that her father died a pawn in international politics. Uh, the sad fact is that the three great nations um, are even harsher on each other now uh, that they're not obliged to engage in open warfare, and they use the machinery of politics to destroy each other and anybody nearby into a pulp. And uh, that's the true reality of the Earth Federation. What we don't know uh, keeps the contracts alive and moving. We don't got to burn the books. They just remove them. Um, the real beauty of it, if you can call it that, is that anyone trying to fight to change system is just branded a terrorist. Don't worry about it. And as far as somebody's blood will have to be spilled for things to change, uh, terrorism will be a truly a reviled profession. Uh, the G-Boys think uh, the path of least resistance is to crush the Federation's two special battalions, the A-Laws and Oz. Oz is their main target, because it's funded by the Romfellow conglomerate, and the uh, they controlled the old AEU, and they've somehow managed to gain Federation ascendancy even over Britannian and the uh, HPL. Um, they're acting independently currently, but they're aware of the um, armed anti-Federation movement um, called Catalan. And uh, squashing them is uh, the biggest excuse A-Laws uses for murdering whoever they like, and wherever they like. Um, this would be a hard thing for the average person to accept without like huge proof. And even harder thing to confront, given the fear of bloodshed that the public got after the the last war. And uh, Esther may not have the uh, vocabulary to express it in words, but she's upset at this uh, false peace. And the G boys are hoping to get a uh, uh, foothold on the problem by exploiting Alors and Aussies' dislike for each other. But to do that, they'll have to contend with the Federation spin doctors. And they hope that by through their travels they'll gather allies and, if necessary, join Catalan for some, uh, uh, yes, for some of their operations. It would be really good, uh, for instance, to find the other colony Gundams and Hero, if he's still alive after self-destructing three months ago. And then. Here, you fuck. Yeah, Cataron. Colony Gundams. Yeah, there's two of you, so there's three more. They're like, yep. And they want to find Hero. And um, Duo calls um, that idiot. She's like, that idiot? Do you mean Hero? It's like, did Crow tell you all about that dude too? And he's like, yeah, he told me how he was like some kind of self destructing otaku dude who loved to do it and he did it all the time. But he had an unshakable sense of justice beneath his poker face, and he was like, "Yeah, I get, it. yeah, yeah." It's pretty much the the gist of it. Um, they'd love to get the um, celestial beings on board too, but there's a problem. Uh, they were all blown up in space. Um, the Federation spin doctors have kept their information totally under wraps because uh, the three great nations wanted them out of the way even more than they wanted the colonial Gundams gone. Because 
there was nothing really to point guns at to keep them away. Whereas they could go, if you attack us, we'll blow up the colonies. But with a celestial being, there's nothing you can really threaten to stop them. And then, phone call. self destructive attack. I mean, it's accurate. Uh, but the Federation Army uh, uh, Radio Esther, and uh, they wanted to submit to a cargo search. She's like, oh, jeez, my buster license isn't good enough to stop them poking around. Jeez, what am I going to do? And then Duo is like, hold it, woman! And uh, he pretends to be a hijacker. And she's like, what are you doing, dude? And then Quattro's like, Esther, we're... Joe's going to pretend to like hijack you so you don't get branded a terrorist, all right? Um, but it's so they don't seem like they're collaborating. The guy's like, what's going on there? Like damn terrorists, and I've got to find the. Okay. That bit. That bit's later. That bit's later. This is uh, Scenario 2, uh, Fugitives. But these guys launch and they're like, alright, you get out of here because, you know, it's going to be like hard to escape with you running around. But they, like that hijack was hopefully convinced enough that they don't think we were hanging together. Uh, and then this bit, um, they talk about a crow's gonna kill him if uh, they let Esther get labeled as a terrorist. And she's like, yeah, he can be scary when he's angry. Crow's like, get out of here, Esther. And it's like, but you guys don't stand a chance without me. And then Crow's like, no arguing. Go on now or I'll shoot you down. But I say, like, spank you too. And then uh, she's like, I'm going. And then Quattro is like, sorry, Esther. And you, uh, you should be apologising to me. I'm the one that hits the women around here. And then these guys show up. But uh, yeah, uh, Quattro says uh, that um, having us around would make it harder for them to escape, so she flies off. And like, you didn't want to mix her up in our dirty fight, she deserves the right to their own life. These guys show up and like, uh, Gundams! Hijacking! And it's like, but we were expecting a, a a small unit and not Gundams from our recon reports. But all Gundam pilots are terrorists, so gotta kill them. And, uh, do you want to watch like, well, I guess uh, the evil name of Gundam may be the last hope we got left. Maybe it'll spook these nerds. Yeah, bloody terrorists from space still coming in here, hijacking our transports, blowing up our women. <laughs> Jack the world. Yeah, quick thinking from Duo. He's a wild dude who comes. He's the the quick thinker. Quattro's the big thinker, Duo's the quick thinker, Troa doesn't care about anything, and the hero's first plan is always blow himself up. You know, you won't be around to see before? Oh, okay, sure.
the these guys attacking us. Don't know their real enemy. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why would I mention Wu Fei? Like, what does he? Like, he doesn't do anything. Wu Fei is the opposite of thinking. Like, not even just not thinking. He just. I think Wu Fei thinks of the right thing to do and then goes, "I'm going to do the opposite of that because I'm a fucking idiot." As you'll see in this game. And like the next. Actually, I, he's he's not a shithead in um, in Z3 Part Two. But like seriously, you, we have to beat him up and make him join us like 400 times. He's awful. Oh, you get him, dog. <laughs> the Gundam is attacking me. The invincible quadrant of Verba win. Verba. I think Joe might have the hardest babysitter job because Lockon had a babysitter job, but one dude just wanted to fuck the computer. One dude was just a good boy, and the other one wanted to be a Gundam. Whereas Joe's got a babysit, a dude whose solution to everything is blowing himself up. The duo? Oh wow, fuck off. This dude with his shit gun. God, he nearly got me. Could have been a problem. Gundam me so strong What the Get blown up but that wasn't us who was it? Who could it be? Mercenaries So some mercenaries show up and like hell yeah hell yeah 
we were off to someone else, but we found these Gundams and they're pretty beat up. So let's uh, get them and sell them to the Federation for big monies. And it's like, but we're wanting people don't like it. It's like, don't mind, I'm going to sell you big monies. Don't worry, it'll work, it's good. And all he's got to do is blame this whole mess on uh, Gundams. And this is like, no, I don't like that at all. How are you doing? Your favorite dude, Wu Fei, he's not here yet. Hester! He's like, didn't we tell you to get out of here? She's like, yeah, and? So what? And then um, she basically just says, uh, I gotta do my duty as a dimensional buster. I'm not helping you, I'm helping the Federation guys that you just beat up. That those guys killed, like, I'm, I'm fighting them. I mean, you just happen to be here and I'm not fighting you, but I'm helping the, the beat up, you know, I'm helping you. Alright? So I was just passing by and some people were attacking the Federation Army. My civic duty to help out! And they're like, wow, she's, uh, learned off and crow. And then this dude uh, says that he's from the Fangs of Dawn, and they're remnants of the uh, WLF, and Esther's not pleased with that. And uh, that's uh, all three of Esther's uh, least favourite characteristics. They're both unfair, non-fair, and anti-fair. And now uh, the SR point is destroyed the genocide on it retreats uh, 6,000 hit points, and it's, uh, it's shit. Just land, Esther, you're not good enough. Fucking Esther. Look how upgraded her robot is. And she still can't hit her, dude. Admittedly, he's small, but. And she's like, Quattro told me to get out of here, but I gotta keep on it and do my duty. <laughs> bon bon, let's go! Whoopsie doodle. No one else could have done it but you, Brasta S. Nice attack, nice attack. This is so good. One day, she will be powerful. Okay, now this guy's like, ooh!
Uh, this dude mentions that incoming to the area are their original targets. The Nightmare Frame. Wait! It's Callan! Howdy, Quattro Joe, how you doing? It's me. I'm alive. And this guy's then like, oh yeah, we're like, gonna do it. We're good. Uh, C2 um, then asks who the hell this one is. It's like, oh, C2's in the thing. Talk about Gundam. They're serious as hell, Callan. And then it's just like, it's Callan, Callan the, the ace of the Black Knights. And C2's like, who's this? Oh, uh, this girl's uh, Crow's protege. It's like, oh, cool, okay, so nice. Brilliant, great. And then uh, Callan tells Esther that she'll be counting on. She's like, Sh oh, y y hell yeah! It's like, oh, well, there's something going on here between Esther and uh, Callan. Let me get the good shit after when everybody's done fucking talking bollocks to each other. <laughs> this is gross for Jay. Active trying to kill Good if she tried. Good. That's pretty, pretty much, pretty much the gist of it. Shit gun for idiots. Can't see to just magic ball shoot with herself out the whole robot fighting thing. No, she's got to find her boy. And Cannon's like, it ain't over, Japan ain't free. Let's go, Tads. Good end. New angry faces, Callan? Yes, Callan has a lot of shit all the time in every game she's in. Which is the two Z2s and Z3. They love that lady down at Super Robot Headquarters. Taking up my fair share of ATs in battling. How hard is it? It's pretty tough, actually. If I was worried, that would ruin me forever. Like, having to remember that when I cast the spells, that's it. I gotta do it all before I do anything with them. Like, not even... I can cast, like... Can't cast them in enemy phase? Fine, easy. Not being able to cast them any time I like? 
like on my own turn. Fuck. That's real. Like that's the tough one. Now, does this guy have any retreats at 4k, I believe? Is the, is okay, retreats at 6. So that's going to be an Esther support with Callan beating the shit out of him, probably. Because she's really fucking good. Um, 3,700... Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to want to cast um, Bless and then find all my Blesses have moved. That's what happens with every bless and cheer you ever want to cast. They always just no. You already moved, Sayaka. Sorry. You moved her to repair the dude that you're now doing the attack with. Yeah, I'm too sure I could you know, get clean for the first time in his life. Futile enemies. It's going to be 129, Will. Off the bat, just be fucking gross. The big thing I'm trying to get used to is not having the the other shoulder buttons to find um, enemies that haven't gone yet, or just to find the enemies rather. see what we can do here with this dude. I, um, uh, let's try this guy first. If that doesn't go, we'll bring in Cal. Esther should be able to do that much damage with her big boy.
Nice work, everybody. So the fangs of the doorman is like, Duh, Gundam, Duh. so they get out and it's like, well, we are Zexis and he's trash, so whatever. Maybe if the Federation uh, Army spent more time hunting down jerks like that dude and less time chasing the wing boys, they'd be earning their paycheck. But they mention about the Black Knights and Callan instantly. Not oh, best, please. Doesn't want to talk about it. Um, okay, so that bit there is um, Esther basically going. The wait, Callan of the Black Knights, the only of the Black Knights, the ace that can destroy a thousand enemies with the bat of an eye and has the ferocity of a wild feral beast equal to her vast bosom. That one, and the Callan's like, uh, only. He's like, come on, boy, let's talk. Come on, let's go. Callan, the Black Knight's ace. Oh. And then, uh, meanwhile, uh, the Gundam sighting reaches Trace, and he tells Zex that he'll uh, lead a task force to take on the Gundam sooner or later, probably sooner, lest the Alors steal a march on uh, Oz. Uh, Zex has lost his enthusiasm for Gundam hunting um, after the Wing Gundam's pilot just fucking blew himself up. Uh, unlike most opponents, uh, Hero's uh, unwavering uh, Nis uh, strikes Zex as that of a true warrior. Uh, the fact that his body wasn't found when Oz picked up the wreckage suggests that he might still be alive and he'll surely rise up to face Oz uh, again one day. But for now, Trace's sponsor uh, Delmire demands results unless Oz want to find themselves absorbed by Alors, that's what they've got to produce. Trace then tells his uh, two lieutenants, Zex and Quattro, to get ready to muster Oz's forces for when the official order to launch comes. What's more, they'll have full authority to gather anyone from Oz's far-flung forces they need. And what he really means is, and Quattro's like, so what you really mean is people from Zexis? And they'll have to fight the Gundams? And he's like, that's right, that's how dangerous I think they are. And Quattro, as one of the former Zexis members, isn't so big on that. How many Shars are there in this game? Three. Three Shars. One for every Gundam in it that isn't seed. Back aboard the the transport, Esther's just losing her shit. Like I'm Esther Hellas, Scott Lads, Dimensional Buster. Crow told me all about you, and she mentions how fucking incredible Callan is, and she wants to be just like you, like your human fighting prowess. And how did you end up with such a large chest? And you gotta give me your secrets. And then Callan's like, Crow described me as a as an oni. Mm. Um, and then this is like, oh, but that's not. He didn't just say you were ferocious. He said that you did have like, uh, like uh, some uh, kindness beneath your lethal exterior. And the cat's like, oh, okay. And he's like, but anyway, just stop worshiping me for a second. Let's just be friends like normal people, all right? Instead of hero worship. How old is Callan again? Um, 17, I think. Yeah, 17, 18. Like, all of the gayest kids are of the high school uh, age. Yeah. Okay, so she's 17 in the first season, 18 now. So she's 18 now.
Yeah, so how about we just be friends like regular people? Nice to meet you, Esther. Nice to meet you, Callan. And then uh, C2 thanks Esther for hospitality too, and uh, she requests uh, pizza for dinner. Pizza. Yeah. Pizza request. Yeah. Pizza. So, pizza request. Um... And walks off. And this is like, wow! She really is just as enigmatic as, uh... Crow told me. And then Callan just goes, she's a fucking witch. And she, then she mentions about the Black Rebellion. C2 went off with the lotion. She found out about the gayest thing. And that's no good. And she's not a big fan. And then Callan mentions that she's a witch and she's not a big she's not C2's biggest fan right now and um, she's got magical powers and all that jazz but uh, working with C2's her best chance of getting Zero back uh, but the uh, Wing Boys are glad Callan and C2 are safe and they offer their condolences to Zero despite all his brilliance captured and executed and Callan doesn't want to go there right now uh, even with uh, many of the Black Knights imprisoned and her mech not in the best of shape she's going to keep on fighting and uh, the G-Boys can relate. Um, Esther offers to drop uh, Callan off anywhere she wants, and Callan uh, requests Singapore. And uh, she and C2 are going to work as uh, mercenaries uh, to raise, uh, um, with some friend of, uh, of hers, raise enough money to return actively to the fight against Federation. And if the Federation won't recognise Area 11 as anything more than Britannian territory, then she won't recognise the Feds. So that's that. And Esther promises to take uh, Callan to her destination uh, in ludicrously wishing that she could uh, meet Crow and talk through this uh, whole mess of complications that she never even knew existed. 